Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And thank you, Nick. I am so proud to be here, so humbled to be standing in front of you tonight. Humbled because, you see, the people who only know me from television have no idea the long, hard struggle that it took John Quinones to get to ABC News. I was the kid who was not expected to accomplish much in life. I was born in the Barrios, in San Antonio, on the west side of San Antonio. My father was a janitor. My mom cleaned houses on the rich part of town. When my dad was laid off from work, we became migrant farm workers, just like a lot of Latinos in South Texas. And we journeyed 1,700 miles as migrant farm workers to Michigan to pick cherries and then tomatoes in Ohio. I didn't speak a word of English when I entered the first grade of school. I remember that first day in class in Mrs. Mrs. Gregory's class at Carvajal Elementary. The bell rings, I didn't speak a word of English, the teacher didn't speak a word of Spanish. This is before bilingual education, no kindergarten for me, no preschool, straight to first class. I go there and I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs. <laughs> no entendía nada. <laughs> and the teach, uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, the bell rings. And where do the kids go? To the playground for recess. Where does little Juanito Quinones go? I walked home. <laughs> I lived, um, I lived two blocks from school. And I got muy fresco, I got home, and I asked my mother, my, mo my mother Maria, God rest her soul, like, Juanito, ¿qué pasó? And I said, I said, se acabó, it's over, ma. <laughs> I like school, I think two hours and you're done. <laughs> I think this is gonna work out very nicely. We used to get punished for speaking Spanish in school. The coach had a paddle, and they had holes drilled in it for extra speed and strength. And he would give us three licks if he caught us speaking Spanish in class. You know, but this was during the Civil Rights Movement, and I had a dream, I had that sueño, that someday I would go to college, and someday I would be a broadcast journalist. My hero was Geraldo Rivera in 2020. And I'll never forget, uh, but back, back that, seemed, that, that dream, that sueño seemed so far out of reach. Because I'll never forget when we were picking tomatoes in Ohio, just outside Toledo, my two sisters, my father and my mother and I, there we were on our knees on the cold, hard ground, looking at a row of tomato plants that for a 13-year-old boy's eyes seemed like they went on for miles and miles. That's what I had to look forward to that day. And my father, Bruno, looking down at me and saying, Juanito, mijo, do you want to do this for the rest of your life? Or do you want to get a college education? It was a no-brainer, of course. I knew I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. But sadly, very few people believed in me. When I would ask my school counselors, how do I prepare for the SATs, for the ACTs? How do I take advanced placement classes? You know what they would tell me? They would say, John, it's great that you have my teachers. These are my counselors. They would say, John, it's great that you have this dream of someday being a television reporter, but we think you should try wood shop or metal shop or auto mechanics. Not that there's anything wrong with those wonderful trades. A lot of people make a good hard living doing that, but I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to do, go to college, and they did to me what people do on what would you do every Friday night. They judged me by the color of my skin and the accent in my voice. But thank God for my mother Maria. She was the one who would say to me, Juanito, it, it doesn't matter that you have to wear the same clothes to school every other day. At least we wash those clothes. It doesn't matter that you have to take bean and tortilla tacos for lunch when all the other kids are taking their fancy white bread and bologna. <laughs> now we know that bean and tortillas are better. <laughs> Thank you. But my mother Maria would say, Maria would say, what matters is what's in here and what's here in your corazón. I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for my mother Maria and programs, social programs like Upward Bound and organizations like the National Hispanic Media Coalition. I wouldn't be here. 
In San Antonio, it was an organization called the Bilingual Bicultural Coalition on the Mass Media, or the BBC. <laughs> That's what they call themselves, these radical Mexicans. You see, when I was growing up, very few people on the radio or on television looked or sounded like me. And the BBC literally picketed outside radio and TV stations in San Antonio, demanding that they hire people on the air that reflected the face of San Antonio, which was 60% Hispanic. They argued that the airwaves of this country belong not to Disney or Comcast or General Electric, but they belong to the people of this great nation. And those, that's true. Those protests by the BBC and my mother's encouragement and yes, her prayers made it work. I graduated from college and I got my big break in network television. I was hired by ABC News and Peter Jennings to cover the civil wars in Central America. And the great irony did not escape me. That little boy who was punished for speaking Spanish in school winds up getting his dream network job in television precisely because he speaks Spanish. <laughs> Can you believe that? And what, and what did that bit of diversity do for ABC News? It brought them stories on a silver platter that no one else could do. All because this reporter speaks another language. All because this reporter has darker skin that allows him to go to places where he's not seen as an outsider. And because there are so many people who are marginalized in this country, those people can open up to me. When I go to the barrios and the inner cities of all of America, they open up to this reporter and they trust me because of where I come from. The Reverend Martin Luther King once said that our lives begin to end the moment we stay silent about things that matter. And that's what my show, What Would You Do, is all about. So thank you, NHMC and Alex Nogales, for speaking up, for waving those picket signs, for barging in, pressuring, and demanding that the media in this country reflect the ever-changing face of the American people, a face that, by the way, is looking more and more Latino than ever before. So, so thank you, Alex, gracias, and NH. MC for making sure that we cannot, we will not, and we must not remain silent. Muchas gracias, eh? Buenas noches. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you. Love you. Cuídense. Thank you. Thank you.